Hi there. In this video, I'm going to extend and then implement the automated warehouse project, using the visualization ability. During the video, I'll mention how PLC addresses can be entered inside a project. Then I'll explain how the visualization ability, can be used to design a human machine interface. First, I'll test the final project. After that, I'll explain important points to extend the automated warehouse project, which was explained and tested in the previous video. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright, let's start the video, with a simple program, which uses an R's instruction, to turn on and off an output. Until now, it was explained how a variable like this, can be connected to a push button or other equipment inside factory I.O., via an OPC server. If you're connected to a PLC, such as an ABB PLC, you can add its addresses here. Note that, real PLC addresses can be used directly, without any variable. But I prefer to use variables, and define an address for them. Now, let's compile the program. As you see, there isn't any error, but CodeSys has not detected the entered PLC addresses because I'm not connected to the PLC. Now, let's see what's the visualization. It can be used as a human machine interface, or HMI. As you see, on the right side, there are different objects, that can be used to design an HMI screen. First, let's add a simple lamp and switch. Note that, when an object is selected, you can see and change its properties on the right side. The most important item for a lamp is its variable. It determines the state of the inserted lamp. Let's connect it to the C variable. Now, let's add a switch. Well. This switch can change the state of a boolean variable. I want to use that, to turn on this output, which is connected to the lamp. So, I need or logic to turn on the lamp from two places. Now, I'm defining a new variable. After that, I'll connect it to the inserted switch. Now, let's test the design screen. Remember, the inserted lamp and switch are connected to these two variables. Based on the program, the switch can be used to turn on the lamp. Also, these two variables, B and A, can be used to turn off and on the lamp.
Well, this was a simple project, to change or display the state of Boolean variables. Now, let's see how a number can be entered or displayed. Well, the inserted potentiometer can change stored numbers. Let me define a new variable, whose data type is integer, and then connect that to the inserted potentiometer. Now, the potentiometer is connected to this variable. By default, its range starts from 0 to 100. On the right side, it can be changed under the scale option. Now, to display the stored number in this variable, let's add an object, whose name is meter. As you see, the default scale for the inserted meter is between 0 and 102. Let's continue and test the design screen. Remember, the inserted potentiometer and meter are connected to the same variable. Alright. Let's implement a more complex project. Here you can see the automated warehouse project, which was implemented in the previous videos. Note that, I've extended the project again. If I change the state of this selector, the right sequence will be executed to unload boxes from racks. Also, these variables have been defined to control the warehouse project, which are connected to these buttons. They work like the emergency, start, stop and stop push buttons now let's start the automated warehouse to see the performance of the design screen i'll explain its settings later note that these lamps are connected to the push buttons lights and also this object displays the stored position on the controller memory Well, like the previous video, if I press the emergency button, the crane must be stopped immediately. After that, I need to disable the emergency button, and then press the reset button. Now, the loading or unloading process can be started again. Now, let me enable the unloading mode. In the next sequence, the crane will pick up the last stored box, and move it to unload conveyor.
Like the previous video, if I press the stop button, the crane will be stopped, after finishing its current sequence. Now, the crane has been stopped. Let's press the start button. Alright, this is a simple HMI screen, to monitor and control a process. Note that, I can also control the automated warehouse using these push buttons. Now, let me explain how the automated warehouse has been extended for this video. Note that, the basic concepts about the project were explained during previous videos. Now, I'm going to explain only the added parts. Well. The right sequence was added for unloading boxes. It works like the left sequence. Their main difference is about this entry action. For the loading sequence, the stored position will increase by 1, but on the right side, for unloading boxes, the stored position will decrease 1 unit. Note that, when the running mode variable is enabled, the state of the selector, determines which sequence, loading or unloading, should be executed. Now, let's go to the design screen. Well, as I've mentioned before, these lamps are connected to the push button lights. Also, as I've mentioned before, these four buttons are connected to four new variables, which have been used to control the automated warehouse. Note that, under the input configuration, there are two items which can connect to a boolean variable. The second one can be used as a push button, and the performance of the first item is similar to switches. Note that, a button like the inserted four buttons, can be added from here. As I mentioned before, the connected variables to the four buttons have been used inside the control POU, next to the push buttons. For example, using this or logic, the start push button, and also the start button on the design screen, can be used to enable the running mode variable. As you see, I've used 55 simple rectangles. A simple rectangle can be added from the basic objects. As you see, each object has some properties. For the inserted rectangular, I can define a static text or number. Also, each rectangular has a color variable. It determines which colors should be used. It selects one of these two modes the normal or alarm state. As you saw, I've used a green color to indicate a specific rack is not empty. Now, I need 54 boolean variables, that determine the state of 54 racks. Instead of defining 54 variables, I've defined an array, that includes 55 boolean elements, and then I've used the 54 elements respectively, to determine the normal or alarm mode for the inserted rectangulars. Naturally, I need a program to determine the state of these addresses. So, I've added this POU. As you see, 
the position variable is an array that includes 55 Boolean memories. The first line of the program, just convert the data type of the next position variable, and store its result on this variable, which was connected to the meter object, inside the design screen. The next lines determine the state of each rectangular. If the automated warehouse is in loading mode, the Boolean variables related to the current position will be set to 1. Otherwise, if the unloading sequence is executing, the corresponding variable will be changed to 0. Note that, to detect the automated warehouse is in loading or unloading mode, these two implicit variables have been used. I've defined them inside the SFC program, which refers to these two steps. Note that, implicit variables were explained during the previous videos. However the help window can be used to learn them. Well, I've used this implicit variable, that indicates the selected step is being executed or not. Alright, important points related to the extended warehouse project with this screen have been told. Note that, there are lots of settings related to objects, that can help you to design a more efficient screen. For example, you can change the visibility or position of an object, based on a variable. In this video, I've tried to display the visualization ability in Codesys, using the automated warehouse project. Thanks for watching my content, if you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.